You are listening to the New American Media. Broadcasting live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles, to be very, very, very specific. Hello and welcome back. A little bit of an extended delay here. You'll have that when you're doing live radio, and it's fun. Because if that's what it takes to get the guests that you need, that's the way that we roll. Thanks for joining us. We already talked a little bit about some of the crazy stories going on. Aaron Hernandez, looking like he's going down for murder. At least it's possible. Tim Tebow might be the new tight end for the New England Patriots. Joe Torre's daughter caught a falling baby. What was it, from a second-story uh, high-rise? What was it, from a... Um, balcony a fire escape whatever <laughs> and yes i lobbed the conspiracy theory that maybe tim tebow was secretly behind the murder of the aaron hernandez associate to frame him so that he could become the starting tight end i'm kind of kidding about that kind of because i like thinking up crazy stories the kidding part because i don't believe that it's just kind of funny i agree to disagree i get called a conspiracy theorist all the time because i kind of have a problem with the nsa spying on us I think that's creepy and weird, and it violates our Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable search and seizure, which makes me a crazy tinfoil hat-wearing kid. So I figured I wanted to just toss that out there, the Aaron Hernandez-Tim Tebow theory. Just kidding. Just kidding. Relax, everybody. But, of course, the big story, we, we know what happened. We know LeBron James, the Miami Heat, back-to-back -back champions. So we're going to bring in Zach Barris to break down what happened. Zach's an NBA scout, lifelong Cleveland sports fan. Regular guest. Hello? Program. Zach, you're live on the air, sir. How you doing today, buddy? Feeling good. Yeah, you're, you're out by the pool. It's a fantastic first day of summer. Happy summer solstice, Zach. Yeah, 105 today in Vegas. 105. And by the way, tell everybody, who did you meet yesterday? Trent Richardson down in the casino last night. Nice. Charlie Sheen would say, winning. So that, I was walking by him, and I was like, I did a double take. I'm like, that's got to be Trevor So I'm walking by, I was like, yo, Trent. And he looked back, and I was like, okay. And I asked him for a quick picture. Nice guy, though. Nice, man. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, so, you know, you're in Vegas having a good time, 105. It's gorgeous out here in L.A., but, you know, it's it, the heat. Talk, talking about the heat and the 105-degree temperature, the heat are back-to-back -back champions. LeBron's back-to-back -back MVP. Where do we start with this? Because the Spurs obviously had their chance. Let's start there. They had their chance in Game Six. They really had that put away, and they could not. They could not put the nail in that coffin. They came back. So let's start with that. Game Six. Well, Pop Popovich has no excuse for benching Duncan in Game Six towards the end. There was no reason to. It allowed Bosch to get an offensive rebound, you know, to set up Ray Allen's three pointer, and that won in the game. You know, Absolutely. tied the game and took the game in overtime. So. You know, that's how you have to look at it. And Popovich, you know, you can say Popovich is the best coach in the NBA, but he made one mistake, and it turned out to be a big, big mistake. Yeah, it was. And LeBron, you know, he missed that long three-pointer right before that. He got the ball kicked back to him, and he nailed the second one. I mean, you know, not everyone's going to hit every shot, but LeBron did his part right there, and then Ray Allen got that back to him. And, I, you know, we I think we all kind of knew it was over when they didn't take it there. It almost seemed like they had they had their chance in Game Six. They weren't going to get it again in Game Seven. I mean, they they had their chances in Game Seven too. Again, Parker played terrible. Danny Green, you know, the Heat. I mean, I have to give Eric Spolster credit. He basically, you know, he made Danny Green basically an obsolete figure in the Spurs offense. You know what he was able to do is they kept someone on him. If you were watching every play that game, you know, I'm looking back. I mean, I haven't reviewed film or anything because I don't have to for that game. But looking at it, you could just see during the game, Danny Green had very few open shots during that game. You know, and like I said, Cavs fans should not be that upset that they got rid of Danny Green. Danny Green has no ability whatsoever to drive the He's a spot-up shooter, and that's it. You know, he's a good fourth or fifth option on a good team. He'll never be relied upon as a number one, number two, or even three option. He's, he's a three-point shooter, and that's what he's good for. You know, he's kind of like a Wesley person in his day, you know, if you're relating to Cavs talk. You know, or, you know, I mean, that that's what he is. He is a three-point shooter. He's a Steve Kerr type of player. You know, Steve Kerr is a point guard, obviously different, you know. But 
he is essentially good for three pointers and three pointers only. You know, every time he would take it to the rim, he'd have open looks. He can't finish on a drive and dribble. He has and no mid range game. You know, I was I was watching that, and he, I mean, he they were he was getting if he could just make a fake. I mean, he, they were over pursuing him. The Heat were over pursuing on that three point line, but he couldn't get any runners, any layups. He couldn't get any mid range jumpers. Oh, his runner was actually horrendous, and that's why he can't finish. Right. Yeah, it was it was lousy, and and they exposed that. And that, that was an adjustment that was made. And, you know, I mean, I guess, unless you have any other thoughts on Game 6, let's just jump to Game 7. I mean, Game 7, like I said, LeBron James was flawless in Game 7. He made very few mistakes. Dwayne Wade played well. And I believe they have a power forward. I can't remember his name now. Uh, but put up zero points and had five fouls last night. <laughs> So, a, a, a guy that was 0 for 5 playing center, I you know, suppose. All I, all I know is that he looks like a raptor. So, <laughs> I, I, I can't distinguish anything more about him. I can't remember the guy's name because he had nothing to do with the Heat's championship run. I well, mean, when in game six. Game six. No, he, had, game he, six. he had two great rebounds that saved him in game six and a couple of blocks. So, I will give but I will not give him credit for game seven. He was horrendous. And if the Heat would have lost, I can guarantee you LeBron James would not have had any of that blame. It would have all been on, I'll finally just say his name, Chris Bosh. He would have had all the blame. <laughs> oh, funny. I thought you were, we were talking about that guy. Okay, so here's his stat line. He played 28 minutes. He was 0 for 5 from the field. He was 0 for 1. Why is he shooting three-pointers? All right, um, no free throws. Uh, seven rebounds total. Two assists. No points. That is a hell of a stat sheet. Almost as good as Mike Miller's uh, – his zero, his donut that he put up. And they still won. Yeah. They still found a way to win. Shane Battier, I mean, talk about how clutch was he off the bench. Yeah, I mean, well, they would not have won without Battier. I mean, what was he, five for five or six for six? Uh, he, was, he was six for eight overall. Okay, I mean, he had an incredible night. Yeah, 18 points. I mean, that's huge. That's huge, especially when you're getting goose eggs across the board from Bosch and Miller. Uh, you know, I, I think Tim Duncan played – Amazing this series. Would, would you Dunk, dispute Duncan that? had a fantastic series, you know. But I was surprised how little they got out of Ginobili. And then Parker in the last two games wasn't very good. You know, and San Antonio failed to make adjustments in game seven. They really did. Um, you know, which hurt them. You know, they were very sloppy with the ball, especially in game seven, which wound up costing the game. You know, I mean, there was turnover after turnover every time. And Miami was able to capitalize on almost all the turnovers on the fast break, and they took advantage of them. That's one of the reasons they won. I mean, also, very rarely are you going to lose a game when LeBron plays that well. And Dwayne Wade was fantastic, too. Yeah, and you got to give him credit. He bounced back because we, we've been very critical of D-Wade on the show. He had 23 points yesterday, 10 rebounds. So do you go back and revisit your opinions on Dwayne Wade's diminishing skills, to borrow from a Bernie Kosar, Bill Belichick phrase from back Wait, in the Wait, can 90s? you repeat that? You just, you just went out. Yeah, I, I was going to say, we, we've been pretty critical of Dwayne Wade over the past few weeks and his diminishing skills. Um, do you still have the same opinion of Dwayne Wade after, after this series? Yeah, I think he had a great series, but it wasn't a superstar-esque series. You know, he's not hes not his former self. He's not the guy that would have put up 30 points a game, you know, when he needed to a few years ago in 2006 when they won the title then, or even two years ago or three years ago. You know, Dwayne Wade is not the same player. You know, for Dwayne Wade to put up 24 points in a game or whatever he put up last night close to it, it looks like a struggle. You know, Dwayne Wade is not capable of putting up 30 on a consistent basis anymore, or even 25 a night. Yeah, he put up over 23 times a series, but he hasn't done that all the playoffs, you know. He Dwayne Wade has taken a back seat. He's older now. You know, things are changing with Dwayne. He's no longer a superstar. He's still a good player. But he is, is he elite top five, top ten anymore? My opinion would say no. Did you like did you like the strategy of Popovich to really give them the open shot and dare them to go for it? I mean obviously in hindsight No, not at all. <clears throat> I mean you're gonna allow Batty to take threes. He's eventually gonna make them. He did it last year, too. I mean, Shane Batty's a very streaky shooter. When he's off, he's terrible. But when he's on, he doesn't miss. Yeah, he was 6 for 8 so, from the three-point line yesterday. 6 of you know, 8. If you know, if you watch what Miami did, Miami guarded the perimeter, and they forced Duncan to take inside shots. And they forced, they forced San Antonio to drive into the lane last night. San Antonio was unable to capitalize on driving. You know, they had a lot of failed, close-miss layups at the hoop. 
missed dunks. You know, they were missing everything around the hoop last night. Well, I, you know, the stars were aligned for LeBron to get his second ring. Uh, where do you think if let, – let's just say he never plays another game of basketball. Where do you think he ranks right now with, with two championships already? Somewhere in the top five. I can't exactly say where, but he's somewhere up there. Even at this point in his early, you know, yeah. early stage of his career. I mean, four MVPs, two titles, two, uh, two, M- you know, two NBA. I mean, two, uh, t- um, you know, championship MVPs. You know, and then you know, four finals appearances. You know, it's a pretty fantastic run. But also, it's in the fact that you know, I, I mean, yeah, his his legacy has to be diminished a little bit by the fact that he had to leave Cleveland, you know, and win with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, you know, and team up as the big three. You never see, you never saw, you know, MJ leave for, you know, New York to go team up with Ewing, you know, and those guys. I could have only imagine what they would have done with, you know, with with MJ, you know, playing in, um, you know, playing in the Garden. I could have only imagine that. But at the same time, though, those Bulls teams are really damn good without Jordan. You know, I think they won like 56 or 58 games in the season without him. You know what? That reminds me. Somebody just posted a comment on one of our previous shows saying. I lost complete respect for this show when I, I forget if it was you or me said that Scottie Pippen was a very good player, not a great player. <laughs> Scottie's a great player. You know, Scottie, Scottie took that team. Scottie was able to be a number one option. That team was a hell of a team without Jordan. They just weren't as good. They weren't the 72 win bowl. You know, Jordan was accountable for a lot of those wins. But that's what, I mean, that's what upset me a couple of years ago. People were going, oh, Jordan's the Pippen. Pippen is a Hall of Fame player. You know, he wasn't a sidekick. He's not Robin the Batman. You know, Pippen was Pippen was, you know, better than Dwayne Wade in his prime. Pippen Pippen was better than Wade, but there's no chance. You know, any day if you offer me a healthy Scotty Pippen in his prime over a healthy Dwayne Wade in his prime, I'm gonna take Scotty Pippen, you know, almost ten out of ten times. Huh. You know, Scotty was a fantastic player. And those Bulls teams, even without Jordan, like I said, were dominant teams. Interesting, because I I think I'd still go with D Wade in his prime, but all right. Yeah, I love Scotty. Hey, look, look, I invested in his rookie card. I liked him too. You know, I I, rooted... I might be a little biased, but you know, like like I said, there's, <laughs> there's some other circumstances why. But you know, obviously, you know, I don't want to get into that. But you know, I, like I said, it's Scotty Pippen. Go back watch some film. I was watching on NBA TV a week ago. You know, I'm sitting there typing up some reports. You know, looking at it, I'm watching the, the finals between the Jazz and the Bulls, and I was like, you know, I'm watching how they operate their offense with, with Steve Kerr bringing up the ball. Doesn't drive, you know, he just passes off the ball to Jordan or Pippen at the top of the key every time. And you're like, what is this offense? You're, you know, it's amazing how they're able to operate with such a slow-paced offense. But Pippen and Jordan were able to get it done. They were great players. Yeah, they had a fantastic surrounding cast, two great role players, and Rodman, Kukoc, Longley, you know, at earlier times when they had Horace Grant, you know, B.J. Armstrong, they had, you know, Judd Bushler, they had some fantastic supporting cast in Chicago. Well, let's talk but about supporting. Don't get me wrong, Pippen and Jordan are two of the 50, you know, Jordan, like I said, is in my mind still the greatest player of all time. Scotty's still got to be up there in the top 20 players of all time. Top 25. Well, well let, let's, let's, let's talk about uh, supporting cast and let's talk about rounding out rosters now. What, what do you think's on the horizon for the Spurs and for the Heat as far as shakeups that you might see coming? Either um, immediately or down the very, road. I think the Spurs will make very few changes. I think some need to be made. Um, Chicago Splitter, he's got some of the worst hands I've ever seen. You know, he's always fumbling the basketball. You know, let's just put it this guy. This guy wouldn't be. Let's put it this way. This guy would not be playing wide receiver or tight end in the NFL. Oh, are we? Oh, um, oh are we going to right to Aaron Hernandez? You you want to take the sidebar to Aaron Hernandez already? Yeah, we'll, we'll go. We'll go there later. But like I was saying, though, it's kind of a splitter. You know, it's amazing. You know, I still remember during the season you were hearing all these rumblings about San Antonio. Didn't want to give up Chicago splitter in a trade for Josh Smith. I can tell you, San Antonio had Josh Smith in that series. They probably would have won that series in five. Wow. You know, Chicago splitter is terrible in that series. He was absolutely just horrendous. Okay, so you might see a move there. Anything else on the Spurs? Do you think some of them are going to retire? Do you think Manu's done? Do you think... I, I really don't know. That's up to them. I think Manu can still play a fantastic regular season, fantastic class. Just didn't perform well in the championship. Right. You know, he had one or two, he had one good game in the championship, and otherwise he was pretty bad. Yeah, I think it was one very um, good game. What was that? Number five. Game six. six. Game six. Six. Yeah. Where they lost. Yeah. No. Um, Parker's still elite. Duncan's still an elite player. I don't care what anybody says. Tim Duncan's still one of the best players in the NBA, despite what anybody said. 
He had a, he had a hell of a series, um, man. I was really and impressed. Role players, you know, the role players, Danny Green was great. Gary Neal was fantastic. You know, um, you know they, they had a great series. You know, it's just, you know, like I said, they had that series in six games and they lost it. Yeah, well, the Heat won it too. You know, they, they had the Spurs it. lost it, and the Heat won it. They found a way. You go back to that that offseason acquisition where Ray Allen bolted from the Celtics when he did, and you know, comes down to one play that he's got to make well, that three pointer. And guess what? It was. You know, it was yeah, worth it. For speaking him. of the Celtics, it looks like their whole team is about to be blown up. The big three will be no more, as it, you know, as it basically pertains to today. Just hearing the rumors, um, you know, you got KG going to the Clippers in a possible trade. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're hearing, you know, like I said, I, I haven't heard anything from our front office on this, so I can't speculate. But going based off of what some of the other reporters have said today is that Paul Pierce is being offered to the Cavaliers for two second round picks. You know, Boston just wants his book, wants his number, cap off the books. I think they're ready to rebuild finally. You know, and if the Cavaliers run Paul Pierce, get Paul Pierce for a year, it puts fans in the seat, it gives them wins, you know, help them become closer to a playoff team. You know, if I'm the Cavaliers, I pull the trigger. You have nothing to lose. You have the cap room. Two second round picks for Paul Pierce. Interesting. Interesting. Do, do if you... I'm the Cavaliers, I would, pull, I would pull the trigger without a hesitation. W- what's Pierce making? I, I don't. I don't know off the top of my head what, what his salary is. I don't. Exa- I don't know his exact cap number, so I can't say. But I know it's in the fifteen million dollar range. Yeah, that's pretty. But high. the Cavaliers have so much cap room; it doesn't matter anyways. They're still under the cap, even if they get Pierce. Okay. You know. I mean, it's it's not a big deal. You can go at them, you're fine. You're still under the cap. You're not paying a luxury tax yet. You know, go out and acquire them. You know, it doesn't hurt to go get Paul Pierce. You know, it's only going to put butts in the seats. And yeah. that's what Cleveland needs to make the playoffs too. You've got three terrible – sorry, I've got the hiccups. Three terrible years. No, this will be great. Keep going. <laughs> three terrible years so far. You need to make a move. You need to get people – you need to get the fans back in it. You know, you're not going to go from a 21 season this year to get LeBron. You need to win games. You know, and if they can do that and put on, they can put together, you know, a team that can win 35, 42, 45 games, you know, and then get rid of Pierce after the year and then go make their attempt at LeBron saying, look, look what we were able to do with Paul Pierce. We were able to win 45 games with Paul Pierce. You know, and then some other bench pieces. We got rid of Pierce. You're that much better than Pierce. We can win 55 to 65 with you. Well, and if you get Anderson you know, Bergeau back, back healthy as yeah. well, and then you get the well, number yeah, one exactly. draft pick. Come back. Come back. We'll even bring you another piece. We'll bring you who you want. You know, we have room for basically a second max free agent. You know, bring who you want. You know, we're looking at a team that's going to win an NBA championship. The West, the Western Conference is a great conference where they beat each other up in the playoffs. There's no elite dominant team. There's just a bunch of very good teams. Let's go out and we can destroy them. We'll, we'll, we'll have a cakewalk through the East, and we're going to dominate the West. We're going to do exactly what you did in Miami, so we're going to put a better team on the floor. We're going to surround you with guys like Kyrie Irving. You know, we're going to go out and pick. You can pick your second free agent to play with. You know, we've got young guys like Tristan, you know, and Dion, you know, and whoever they take with the number one overall pick this year, whoever it may be. Well, yeah. Who do you think that's going to be right now at this point? Any any difference Noel, in opinion? I think if Noel checks out medically, it will be Nerlens Noel. I think if he checks out medically. But he's definitely, you know, now that it's come, you know, some problems have arisen, you know, have arise with, you know, with, with Nerlens. You know, Nerlens hangs out with a, you know, just basically a sleazy crowd outside of the game, which is not a good sign. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, there's personal issues that's starting to come out. I've heard some other things, some other rumblings about him. I just don't want to say them over the air because it's inappropriate. But, you know, some, some things from the combine that I heard. But, you know, they, they were just, with you know, which I basically come to knowledge in the past, past week. And I yeah, I was going to say, I, I, it, but, I, you know, that, that, that's, that's fair enough. Yeah, but, but honestly, some of the personal issues regarding New Orleans Noel would scare me if I were a team. Wow. It, if I were them, I would do, you know, I would put a guy on him 24-7, basically saying, you know, I, you know, hire him a driver, do what Detroit did for Andre Drummond. You know, Andre's a mama's boy. Basically, Andre didn't have the same kind of problem, but Andre had his family, you know, running his, running his life, you know, who weren't in a great position, but they have someone take Andre to the facility every day, drive him home. He had a fantastic rookie season. Fantastic. He's going to be a star as long as he stays with the right crowd and the right people, you know, around him. The same regards for Nerlens Noel, too. You know, Nerlens needs to have the right people around him. When you have bad friends that are just going to take your money, they're sitting there, they're doing drugs, you cannot have that. I'm not saying Nerlens doing it, but he does not hang out with the right crowd of people, from what I understand. 
Yeah, and that, that stuff's very important when you're going to invest. Number one picks are very valuable. You cannot screw those things up. You yeah, just it, can't yeah, and do ben, it. ben Macklemore, I have a friend that works in a different, you know, a different organization that's in the top ten. I'm not going to say who, but he worked out for them. He showed up out of shape for the workout. He seemed like he didn't care. He was outperformed by Jamal Franklin from San Diego State, who I love. And I, I just, I, I don't really know about Macklemore. You know, it's embarrassing. You know, you would think a guy trying to be drafted high would be in shape and trying, trying to be the highest draft pick in, you know, in the draft, not trying to go to rule. Uh, you know, I'm the best player. You know, Macklemore didn't impress in the Michigan game in his final game where they lost until the very end. I believe he had zero points until late in the second half. He didn't do anything. I mean, that's not a superstar to me. That's not Ray Allen. You know, that that's not anyone. Okay, so, you know, so for, this... for me, if I'm the Cavaliers, I think Deion Waiters still right now above Ben Macklemore. If you're asking me on a personal level, I'd rather have Deion. I think Deion shows more potential. I think he showed more heart. This is a guy who put up over 30 points in a few games last year. Deion, I, I know... Brian, I know you remember the Clippers game last year. Absolutely. That was one of the few I got to watch front to back because it was in my backyard and I could I could flip it right on. And in between what I was doing, it was right there. And he lit him up in that Clippers game. I do remember that. I, I was texting you off air about that. I couldn't believe it. Kid was just unconscious. Absolutely. And you can't tell me that when you watch this kid and you go, okay, the kid definitely has all-star potential. Yeah, he has something. You exactly. know, when there's a rookie draining fadeaway jumpers, you know, over guys like Jamal Crawford and Chris Paul. At one point, they put Chris Paul on him. You know, he, he's just, he, he, you know, he's clobbering Chris Paul on the offensive end. And you're just sitting there going, wow, what a special talent. You know, obviously rookies all have their off nights. They do. He had more off nights than he had good nights. But there was a point in the season where it started to come where he was more consistent. His PR was, you know, his player efficiency rating, you know, was much improved. He had, he, he was definitely improving throughout the season. That's what you want to see. I wouldn't give up on Deion Waiters if I were the Cavaliers, and I don't think they are. They, they leveraged a lot of their future by taking him over Harrison Barnes. So you don't go and replace him right away with, you know, with Ben McLemore, which I think would be a really idiotic move and a bad mistake by the Cavaliers. And I just can't see Chris Grant doing that. You know, like I said, they had a lot of faith in Deion Waiters. I just can't see them moving him to the bench, you know, the fourth overall pick in the draft right away. You know, if anything, you know, the Otto Porter thing wouldn't surprise me if they drafted him picking up a three right away. The Alex Len thing... That rumor surprises me a little bit. Now, I'm not saying the Cavs won't take him, but if his potential, potential, is it Zydrunas Ogowskis, then Ogowskis is a two-time all but by no means of any draft would he have ever been the number one overall pick. Right. You know, he was a good player, a very good player. Very good player, correct. But, any, but by any means, he was not a multi, you know, he was not a multi-year all other than two years. But, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't you know, a five-time all-star, six-time all-star. You know, and Len has foot problems, too. He's not, you know, it's not like his health concerns are out of the water. You know, they're still there. They still exist. And that's what you have to worry about. Okay, so we, 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 we're now getting closer to the draft here. We're finally we're hearing a few things about who's sliding and now who's rising. Because we're, we're hearing, the, you know, the, the questions about Nerlens. No, I don't know. The questions, questions, you know, nothing for certain. And we're not getting too specific, but there are questions out there. Um, who is showing up that, that that's impressing people at this point? Is there anyone that's kind of starting to rise uh, up? You know, Oladipo is showing up big time. I don't know if the Cavaliers are in love with them, no. Um, but I honestly believe Oladipo is one of the safest picks in the draft because no matter what, no matter what, you're getting a guy who, and like you said, a couple of weeks ago I said, I don't see any way the Cavaliers wouldn't pick Nerlens alone unless they didn't clear medically. I didn't know about his you know personal background. I was completely unaware of that at the time. You know, where I work, we're not anywhere near drafting in the top 10, so we never even worried about New Orleans all season. You know, so New Orleans was, well, you know, no concern. But honestly, just based on a basketball potential, I think New Orleans is the way to go. But, you know, you have Oladipo who's a lockdown defender, and he's not a bad offensive player. If his offensive game actually develops, he could be a great player in the NBA. He's smart. You know, this is a kid who came in and just developed so fast in Indiana. He was a two- or three-star prospect. I think he was a three-star press, but he wasn't supposed to be anything special. And look what he did at Indiana last year. He was, he was fantastic. He did impress and he's me. Another great, he's another great fit for Mike Brown's system because he can guard the one, two, or the three. You know, he can guard all of them, and he's fantastic at it. So I think Will Depot is one of the safer picks in the book. Uh, you have Otto Porter. But if the Cavaliers are banking on getting back LeBron, you don't want to take a three at the, you know, at the number one overall pick. Yeah. You know, only to have him sit on your bench where he'd be a trade asset, you know, a year later, and who knows what you can get for him. 
Well, that's it. That's if the Cavs are are putting their eggs in the basket of not getting left at the altar twice on the LeBron James sweepstakes. You know, I mean, I mean, like you said, you can always trade them a year later. Um, but you look at other picks too, and I, I, you know, there's Anthony Bennett. I can't see the Cavaliers being in love with Anthony Bennett. Now, I I really like Anthony Bennett. You know, I remember going to a couple of his games at UNLV early, early in the season before he was projected as a top five, top ten pick. And I remember seeing this kid. I said. Wow, he is damn good. I still remember saying it to myself when I watched him. You know, he put up like 18 and 12 in a game I was watching, and I just said, this kid is a star. But he's an undersized four. You know, you can play him as a three, but at the same time, might persist that as it did with Derek Williams in Minnesota. Yep, and there was that conversation. There was a conversation that he should have been the draft pick from the Cavs as well. But yeah, well, let's talk about Minnesota. Did you see any trades? Because all all of the options that the Cavs have, it seems like they might even be able to leverage and slide back a few slots and accumulate a few well, other assets. Is there? Is that? I mean, I really don't. I really don't know what they're going to do with the number one overall pick. I really have no clue. This draft isn't like last year, where I was able to give you all the picks on paper. Right, right, right. You know, other than Deion Waiters, you know, I said the rumors. I called the Deion Waiters a smokescreen. I was completely wrong about that, and I admit that. You know, I thought it was a complete smokescreen. I didn't see that one coming. Um, you know, I, I thought they would pick Kid, Gil, Kid Gilchrist if he was available at four, but, you know, Charlotte took him at two. You know, so Thomas Robinson went to pick later, but I also didn't see the Cavs passing on Harrison Barnes last year. I thought they were really in love with Barnes. Uh, you know, and that's but, uh, but you know, and that's the problem when, when these analytical systems that these teams employ – you know, it's hard to determine because, you know, our system might be different from the Cavalier system, so we can only project. And last year, I didn't know Deion Waiters was projected to do that, you know, projected that high. I didn't realize they had him projected as the third best player in the draft behind Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And, you know, they went and selected him. So I, I honestly believe the number one overall pick is completely open at this point. I think, you know, I think it's going to be one of the first drafts where you can see a mock completely wrong in the top six picks. Wow. You know, by, by a great writer. There's nothing guaranteed. In other drafts, usually four out of six or five out of six, and sometimes even all six are guaranteed. You know, it's a lot like the NFL draft. It was this year, you had no clue what was happening either. Right. You know, there was no certainty at the top of the draft this year. You know, you know. So it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I think the Cavaliers, they have a lot riding on this pick. Yeah. Just make the right pick. I mean, your future is riding on this pick. And worst case scenario, if you go out and you don't get LeBron next year and you have a high pick, you know, like I said, you have the Harrison twins available, Jabari Parker, Aaron Gordon, you, you know, you have Andrew Wiggins. There's a lot of great players available next year. The whole top ten will be unbelievable. So they will be, you know, like I said, if they don't land LeBron and they have a bad season, it's not the end of the world. Well, you know, just hate to be left at the altar twice with that whole sweepstakes. You know how that goes. But anyway, I don't know. I mean, that, that's pretty much the, the quick hits that we have on the NBA draft. We've pretty much wrapped up the NBA Finals. How about how about how about any any thoughts real quick on the Aaron Hernandez thing? I know it's not your wheelhouse, but I mean obviously it's a crazy story that's developing. You been following? I mean, that he up? Sa- he sounds guilty to me. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't accidentally smash your cell phone and destroy your own security system if you're then hiring you get- a cleaning crew to scrub down your house. <laughs> I mean, I only do that on occasion. I, I only do that every week when I'm in my house clean. You know, I get a new cell phone. You know, destroy my security system. You know, but I mean, but it's not it's not that frequent. You know. Well, well where are you at right but, now? You know, you're you're in Vegas, right? So you know, depending on the crazy parties that you have, you might have to hire a private security or a private cleaning company to make sure the hotel doesn't. Yeah, I'll, I'll have them wiped on my Instagram. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's a good point. If you guys aren't following Zach, please make sure you're doing so. Um, I believe you tweeted out. Did you tweet out that picture with you and T. Rich? Yeah, I did last night. All right, you can follow Zach on Twitter. He's at Z Barris. That's Z B A R I S. Zach, any other quick hits before we let you go and let you get back to the fun in Vegas, buddy? Uh, no, that's about it. Like I said earlier, this Cavaliers pick is wide open. Um, you know, I'll be flying out. Of, I'll be able to fly. I'm flying out of LA on Monday. And, you know, I'll know more about the draft then when the board starts to shape up. But, you know, obviously we'll do a draft special probably on Wednesday if we can because I won't be able to talk Thursday just because I'll be very, very busy. But, you know, I'll be able to talk Friday, Wednesday or Friday again. We can do our mock on Wednesday. Yeah, let, let's try to set that up for sure. Well, have a good time. Stay safe. Don't get in any Aaron Hernandez-type trouble. And uh, we look forward to talking with you again soon, Zach. All right? Well, that's already happened. You're never going to be able to reach me on this cell phone again. <laughs> It's done, baby. All right, Hangover 4, starring Zach Barris. All right, man, stay safe. We'll talk with you in a few days. All right, buddy.
All right, take care. Have a good one. Bye. All right, there goes Zach Barris. <laughs> Last time I'm ever going to get to call him on his bat phone. It's going to be destroyed and wiped clean, a la Aaron Hernandez style. Oh, boy. So, I mean, I mean, you're hearing it. You're, you know it, too. You know that there's not a Shaquille O'Neal or a LeBron James in this draft. In, in the respect where it's a kind of a consensus number one pick. So, what do the Cavs do? I mean, hell, I mean, you just heard you just heard Zach talking about some of the character issues, some of the stories that are going around. Of course, they're just stories, and, you know, we didn't even actually say what the stories were for the most part. Um, <clears throat> but you've got to understand, if, if, if you're going to put that much time and money and energy and you're going you're gonna to mortgage, what, five years, seven years forward on somebody that maybe doesn't have their personal issues handled, that's dangerous. You are really... I don't know, what's the analogy I'm looking for? You, you're turning over the, the captain's wheel to a, to a, a drunk captain? No, because now I'm calling him a drunk. See, th- there's an analogy that works here, but, but you're really risking it. You know, you're really rolling the dice with something. You know, it's like, it's like uh, I don't know, what is it like? Usually I'm pretty good at metaphors and analogies and whatnot. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's kind of like if you need breaks and you just keep pushing it, pushing it until they just don't work anymore. Who who knows? But you need to kind of have a little bit more trust than, <laughs> you know. Th- there might not be any certain things, guarantees, locks, one hundred percent situations when it comes to drafting a player. Whether it's NBA, uh, Major League Baseball, you know, it doesn't matter. Pick your sport. Maybe there is no such thing as a lock. But if you have red flags, that is concerning, and that's really interesting to hear. Uh, hear the Paul Pierce for two second round picks I mean what are you going to get out of a second round pick and we have a bunch of picks would you rather have Paul Pierce or a couple of picks I don't know we got a lot of young cheap players we could use a name we could use someone that could you know yeah I mean he's getting older he's, he's older we know that but it would put bodies in the seats and it would be another trade asset maybe or it could be something that could lure another free agent or another piece of the puzzle Cavs with Paul Pierce or Cavs with two second round picks and maybe they send them all overseas to develop or something. I'd rather have Paul Pierce, I suppose. You know, you get a healthy Anderson Verajao next year. Another year of growth with Dion Waiters and Tristan Thompson and Kyrie Irving. Maybe you make a, a deal during the middle of the season, depending on who we draft. Hey, the Cavs could be a pretty tough team next year. Of course, I've been saying that for a couple of years. The eternal optimist, I suppose. But we'll see how it shakes out. It's interesting, the Paul Pierce thing. And we'll have to keep an eye on the Clippers, too, see, see what they're able to do if they're going to up with Doc Rivers, Kevin Garnett. Wonder wonder how that's going to shake out. But, you know, that's why we bring Zach in. You get little little pieces, little uh, little, little little nuggets of wisdom, if you will. So, good times. Yeah, make sure, make sure you're following Zach on Twitter. He's at Z Barris, Z-B-A-R-I-S. Check out his photo from yesterday with Trent Richardson, running back, running back extraordinaire from the Cleveland Browns. And do us a favor, check out our homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com. Check out our Twitter feed. We're at American underscore media underscore. Check that out, please. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash thenewamericanmedia. And leave your comments. We always like that. And go on Facebook and search The New American Media and like our page. That'd be sweet. So that's that. I mean, what are we what are we talking about here? We're talking about the fact that we're going to have the draft coming up next week and I guess <laughs> you heard it here first folks <laughs> Zach says we're doing a special show on Wednesday well doggone it we're going to try to do a special show on Wednesday a little draft special why not see if we can maybe put some put some names down on the big board take some guesses throw the darts so feel free to leave your top 5 top 10 top 20 mock draft in the comments section especially on the YouTube channel we, we love that we love the interaction and yeah, yeah. Maybe it's time to stop rooting against the Heat laundry and just focus on rooting for the Cavaliers laundry. At the end of the day, that's all we're doing. It's, 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 it's the same that nations do. We fight over flags. You know, it's, it's, it's cloth and a design, an insignia, a logo. That's all we do in sports. But it's supposed to be fun, so let's have some more fun with it, shall we? That's why we do this show. Hey, it hasn't been fun being a Cleveland sports fan, the Indians, Cavs, Browns. 
Nah, I'm 34 years old. I've never celebrated a championship with the Indians, Cavs, or Browns in my lifetime. It's over 100 years of cumulative misery, frustration, ineptitude, failure. That's why our show's called The Unhappy Hour. But one of these days, friends, one of these days, I tell you, it's going to turn around. It's going to turn around, and it's going to be glorious, and I'm flying back home, and I'm going to be in that parade. I'm telling you now, telling you now, telling you now, I'm going to be there. just don't know which team. <laughs> For a while, I thought it was going to be LeBron and the Cavs, obviously. Back in the 80s, you know, I thought maybe it could have been the Browns, for sure. 90s, I thought it was the, the Indians. Who knows? We'll see how it all shakes out in the... What is it, this, the 20-teens? Although 11 and 12 are not technically teens, the decade's a little off. But sure, the 20-teens. Oh, let's see. Let's see who gets, gets their act together. The Cleveland Browns have got a little bit of work ahead of them. Having some problems with Jimmy Haslam, the owner, getting investigated. Potential wrongdoing. Josh Gordon already missing two games. And Trent Richardson has a couple of issues he's trying to sort out as well. But hey, we'll see. That's why we stick around. That's why we root. That's why we connect. That's why we want you to find us on all those social media outlets. That's why we keep doing the unhappy hour. Two years running. We are the longest running, Cleveland-centered, Los Angeles-based sports show that we're currently aware of. We should make hats that say that. Maybe you could like join the Little Orphan Annie fan club, kind of like in Christmas Story. And we'll send you like something special, like a really cool hat. The only Cleveland-centric, Los Angeles-based sports show that we're currently aware of. It'd be a pretty stupid piece of clothing. <laughs> One of, my, one of my friends used to call stuff like that craptacular. It's so bad, it's good. Either way, special thanks to Zach Barris. Might have a special guest coming up here on Agree to Disagree. Either way, we're going to be covering the NSA, spying on every cell phone conversation, every text message, every photo that you've ever sent, every email you've read. It's creepy. It's violation of the Fourth Amendment. Illegal, in, or I'm sorry, unreasonable search and seizure. We're going to talk about Edward Snowden, 1984, and more. And agree to disagree here on the new American Media .com. Agree to disagree. Yeah, it's a radio show we have on the new American Media .com every single Friday at 4:30 p.m. Pacific. Join the show. What do we talk about? Politics, religion, and spirituality. Basically anything you're not supposed to talk about in a bar. <laughs> you're not supposed to have these conversations inside of a bar, but we have them every single Friday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific on thenewamericanmedia.com. Join the show, offer your opinion, and let's agree to disagree, but let's have a good conversation. 